Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is the Olympus OM-1, the flagship mirrorless camera from OM Systems. Yes, the Olympus logo on the head of a new body, something I don't think any of us expected to see following the camera division split from Olympus Corporation in 2021. But this is a special occasion, with 2022 marking the 50th anniversary of the original Olympus OM-1 35mm film SLR. To celebrate, the new OM Systems digital camera shares exactly the same name, even dispensing with the previous OMD branding. And while there is an OM Systems logo nestled discreetly in the corner of the body, it's the Olympus name that boldly enjoys pride of place on the head. OM Systems assures me this will be the last camera to sport the Olympus name, but there's no doubt it will strike a powerful chord with fans of the brand and its long history. Ok, with all that said, let's get on with the camera. OM Systems gave me a brief chance to try out the OM-1 for this hands-on preview, so I can tell you all about what's new and how it fits into the lineup. I'll follow this up with a full review of a final production model as soon as they become available, and once that's ready, I'll link to it here. First things first, the OM-1 is based on the Micro Four Thirds standard, employs a new stacked 20 megapixel sensor, can record 4K video up to 60p, boasts industry-leading weather sealing and stabilisation, and costs $2,200 or euros, or £2,000 for the body alone. The OM-1 may not be an official member of the OMD series, but it unsurprisingly and wisely shares a lot of the design DNA that we've come to know and love. It's unsurprisingly closest in style to the EM-1 Mark III, a model that continues to sell for roughly two-thirds the price of the new OM-1. The grip's a little deeper than the Mark III and feels very comfortable in your hands. It weighs 599 grams with battery and card, making it only 19 grams heavier than the Mark III, and the dimensions are almost identical, other than that slightly deeper grip. Olympus was always ahead of the game regarding weather sealing, and the only company in its peer group to actually quote industry standards. While the EM-1 Mark III and EM-1X were rated as IPX1 though, the OM-1 goes a little further to attain an IP53 rating. This means it's now protected from water spray less than 60 degrees from vertical, so while that's still way less than the dunking that a top-end smartphone can survive, it's still an improvement over those previous models, which I was able to pour water over without complaint in my tests. Either way, respect to the company for being the only one to issue proper weather sealing certification, rather than a nebulous suggestion of what it might be capable of surviving. From the top, the control layout is similar to the EM-13, with a power collar switch around hard buttons for the drive, flash, autofocus and metering modes to the left of the viewfinder. Meanwhile, on the right hand side are a chunky lockable mode dial, and buttons for exposure compensation and movie recording, and that latter button doubles as a toggle for the high res composite mode. The decent sized and tactile thumb and finger dials remain, although are now embedded into the body, rather than sitting on top. Round the back, the layout continues to be almost the same as the EM-1 Mark III, including the autofocus joystick, although the AF on function now wisely has its own dedicated button, rather than sharing it with AEL on the Mark III. Behind a door on the grip side are twin SD card slots, now both supporting UHS-2 speeds, and that's an upgrade over the Mark III, which only supported UHS-2 speeds on one slot. Behind three flaps on the left hand side are the same four ports as the Mark III before it, so you get USB-C, micro HDMI and 3.5mm headphone and microphone jacks. The mic jack is higher than before though, which makes it better for clearing the screen articulation mechanism. You can power or charge the camera over USB using a power delivery system. The camera itself is powered by a new BLX1 lithium ion pack rated at 2280mAh and claiming 520 shots with a mechanical shutter, that's up from the 420 shots of the Mark III. Now this may not match the potential life of the larger EM1X with its built-in portrait grip, but if you add the optional HLD10 battery grip and fit a second battery, you can double that life, as well as gaining the usual portrait controls and maintaining the IP53 weather sealing. Unfortunately for owners of the previous batteries, I don't think they're compatible with the new camera. For eye level composition, OM Systems has finally switched the fairly low resolution LCD viewfinder of the Mark III and the M1X for a high resolution OLED panel, and you're looking at the view through it right now. This sports a respectable 5.76 million dots with 0.83 times magnification, comfortably bigger than the Mark III and way more detailed than both it and the EM1X. It's also quoted as running at 120 hz although I'll have to wait for my final review to check whether the refresh varies with resolution or mode. 
Either way, a large high resolution OLED viewfinder is a big upgrade for the OM1 and I personally won't miss the old LCD. The OM1 unsurprisingly sticks with a side hinged, fully articulated 3 inch screen that can face forward or back on itself for protection, but now sports a high resolution panel with 1620k dots, a small but nice upgrade. While I've been showing you the viewfinder and screen, Olympus owners will undoubtedly have noticed the new menu system, now sharing a similar horizontal structure to Canon. As Olympus added more and more features to new bodies, I always felt that the menus became increasingly confusing, so I do welcome the opportunity for an overhaul here. That said, some traditional aspects have remained, such as the tiny heart and diamond icons indicating silent and anti-shock drive modes, which I've personally always found a little bit confusing. On the upside though, the menu system does considerately explain why greyed out items have become unavailable, which is more helpful than some systems which leave you to work it out for yourself. Moving on, arguably the most exciting upgrade on the OM1 is its brand new sensor, which may match the previous one in terms of the 20 megapixel resolution, but now features a stacked BSI design. OM Systems claims it will deliver an extra stop of dynamic range and a two stop benefit in noise levels over the previous sensor that was first seen on the EM1 Mark II back in late 2016. I will of course be testing these claims in my final review, along with making comparisons against other systems, which lest we forget haven't stood still either during this time. But in the meantime, the new sensor and image processor also bring a raft of focus and speed enhancements to the OM1. The previous sensor already sported phase detect autofocus over its arch rival Panasonic, but the new sensor greatly increases the coverage and density to 1053 cross type AF points spread across the entire frame. The OM1 also gains improved face and eye detection and includes object recognition for planes, trains, cars, cats, dogs and birds. I'm looking forward to putting this new quad pixel AF system through its paces. The electronic shutter can shoot at up to 50 frames per second with continuous AF or 120 with single AF, both speeds also available in Pro Capture mode which starts buffering images before you fully push the shutter release. The increased readout speed of the sensor should also reduce rolling shutter artifacts, making the electronic shutter modes that bit more practical. If your subject is mostly static and you fancy more detail, the OM1 inherits the high res shot mode of recent models, which captures and combines eight images to boost the resolution to 50 megapixels when used handheld, or up to 80 when mounted on a tripod, and the in-camera compositing is now over twice as fast. The built-in focus stacking can still combine up to 15 images in camera, but again it's now faster than before. And if you prefer to assemble bigger stacks on your own computer, focus bracketing with more frames is of course still available. Amongst the wealth of other cunning modes inherited from earlier models, live composite mode now works handheld, while the live neutral density simulation is now available up to ND64. If you're a video shooter, the OM1 represents a big upgrade over its OMD predecessors, supporting uncropped 4K up to 60p in either 16x9 or the wider DCI shapes. If you record in H.264, the tonal range is 8 bits, extending to 10 bits when switched to H.265. Slow motion fans will appreciate 1080 video now being available up to 240p, I believe also with autofocus, albeit incurring a crop. There's also HLG, OM log for the graders, and I'm pleased to report an auto ISO option when filming in the manual exposure mode. The OM1 will also output 12-bit 4K raw video over HDMI to external recorders, although as you've already seen, it does use a micro HDMI port. I'm told you can film for longer than 30 minutes per clip internally, and look forward to testing not just the quality of the video, but how that stack sensor will hopefully reduce rolling shutter artifacts. As always, OM Systems wouldn't confirm who made the sensor, but many of the specifications look similar to a Sony component that was announced last year. Eagle-eyed analysts will also note that that Sony sensor can potentially do 4K at 120p, whereas the OM1 tops out at 4K 60. Now there's more than just a sensor involved in achieving this, as you'd also need support from the processor, as well as heat and power management and sufficiently fast card access. The bottom line, however, is whoever makes the sensor, you won't be getting 4K 120 on the OM1, as these are hardware limitations. Panasonic has, however, promised 4K 120, as well as 5.7K, on their GH6, the latter suggesting it may use a different sensor than the OM1, depending on how they count their Ks. We'll find out when the GH6 becomes fully public, so check my channel for the latest news. 
Now back to the OM1, and whether you shoot stills or video, you get to enjoy one of the best built-in stabilization systems on the market, with OM systems claiming up to seven stops of compensation for unstabilized lenses, extending to eight when used with a Sync IS lens. The seven stops of Ibis alone may be the same as the Mark III and the M1X, but both of those bodies allowed me to handhold ludicrously long exposures, up to eight seconds with a 35mm equivalent lens. Speaking of exposures, the OM1's mechanical shutter offers the same range as the previous models, so you get a top speed of 8,000th of a second and up to 30 minutes with the bulb timer. Switch to the silent electronic shutter and the top speed increases to 32,000th of a second. Meanwhile, the flash sync is 250th for the mechanical shutter or 100th of a second for the electronic. In terms of burst speed, the electronic shutter can fire at up to 120 frames per second, depending on the mode, and some restrictions, for example the SH2 mode, will only support its 50 frames per second maximum with a handful of lenses, all in the Pro Series. Meanwhile, the mechanical shutter is rated to 400,000 actuations, and fires at up to 10 frames per second. And here's how that sounds. Speaking of lenses, OM Systems is releasing two new ones alongside the new body. The first is an updated version of the 12 to 42.8, costing £899 and sharing the same optical design as before, but with new coatings and IP53 sealing to match the camera. The second is a brand new design, a compact 40 to 150 f4, costing £799 and again IP53 rated, and both lenses will be branded as OM Systems. The OM1 proves there's not just life left in the Micro Four Thirds format, but also for a brand that we thought would never grace a new camera body again. The OM1 refines the excellent controls and ergonomics of the EM1 Mark III, improves the already leading weatherproofing and built-in stabilization, and thanks to a new sensor and image processor, accelerates almost every function while boosting autofocus capabilities, image quality, and video frame rates. The photo resolution may remain the same as earlier models, but the claimed improvements in noise levels and dynamic range, as well as focusing speed and object detection, could be sufficient for fans of the system who were already satisfied by 20 megapixels. Plus videographers now get 4K up to 60p and 1080p up to 240p. If it all works as promised, it could be very tempting for outdoor and wildlife photographers. I'd say the asking price is also reasonable given the mobility and robustness benefits, although much the same arguments remain as before. If you're happy with the sensor size, but are more of a pro videographer, then look out for the Lumix G86. If you want a bigger sensor, consider the wealth of full framers now available, from the slightly cheaper Lumix S5 for example, to the more expensive Sony a7 IV and Canon R6. And if you love Olympus but have got less to spend, there's good deals on the EM1 Mark III. There's pros and cons to all of them, and ultimately, that's all I can say until I test a final production model. Well, apart from one thing, I was personally surprised how powerful the choice of branding felt, not just seeing the Olympus name for one last time on a new camera, but also switching the OMDEM mouthful of letters for a simple OM1, bringing us full circle from one classic to possibly another. It feels like a fitting end for the Olympus camera brand, and hopefully a prestigious start for OM Systems. I hope you found that useful. As always, if you don't want to miss out on any of my news, reviews, and tutorials, make sure you're subscribed. I'd really appreciate it. That way, you'll know about my in-depth OM1 review as soon as it's ready, not to mention my GH6 coverage. Micro Four Thirds is certainly enjoying a great start to 2022. I'd also love to hear what you think about the OM1, especially the Olympus fans out there. Is it the camera you really wanted them to make, or is it still lacking in some regard? And ultimately, are you happy to stick with the Micro Four Thirds system? Do let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.